Today I'm going to make nearly pure acetic acid from this cheap vinegar I got at the grocery store. Now before I get started, I want to be clear that there are easier ways to make this chemical and it isn't terribly expensive if you just want to buy it outright. However, this is how pure acetic acid was made for hundreds of years, which I think is in of itself interesting. Anyway, to get started, I go ahead and neutralize some vinegar with some 10 molar sodium hydroxide. This is a pretty standard acid-base reaction and will result in the formation of water as well as the salt sodium acetate. Historically, the calcium salt of acetate was made instead by using calcium hydroxide, and you can also use sodium bicarbonate. Using sodium bicarbonate, however, would result in the formation of carbon dioxide, which would generate a lot of potentially annoying foam. Using sodium bicarbonate does have one benefit though in that you can use the bubbling to track the reaction, as no more carbon dioxide will be generated once all of the acetic acid has been neutralized. In old times, this vinegar would have been a product of fermentation, but today most vinegar is produced by the iridium catalyzed carbonylation of methanol and then diluted to 6% for the consumer market. This is called the Kativa process and accounts for 5 million of the 6.5 million tons of acetic acid produced annually. As a side note, this process can be modified by replacing the iridium catalyst with a rhodium catalyst which will produce acetic anhydride rather than acetic acid. Anyway, for the next step, I go ahead and boil down my very dilute solution of sodium acetate to around a tenth of its initial volume, at which point a slight film will begin to form on its surface. This is a super saturated solution of sodium acetate, and if you wanted, you could cool this down and nucleate a rapid crystallization which can look pretty cool. In my case here, I decided to simply add a bit of acetone to help jumpstart the crystallization. This will precipitate sodium acetate trihydrate, which is further dried in an oven at 150 degrees Celsius for a few hours to drive off the extra moisture, and leave behind an hydrosodium acetate. During this time it took on a brown color for some reason, and that usually happens to me, but it really doesn't matter. Next I transferred my anhydrosodium acetate to a boiling flask and set it up for a basic distillation. For this distillation, I simply connected an addition funnel above the sodium acetate filled with excess 98% sulfuric acid, which is slowly dripped onto the sodium acetate. As soon as the sulfuric acid makes contact with the sodium acetate, the two violently react, forming acetic acid and sodium sulfate. This reaction is extremely exothermic and hot enough to instantly vaporize the acetic acid, which can be a hazard if this isn't done under a fume hood or in a closed system. Once all the sulfuric acid has been added, I go ahead and crank up my heating mantle to boil away the acetic acid that didn't boil away on its own, and this slowly drips into my collection flask. After the distillation had slowed down significantly, I went ahead and cut the heat and disassembled my apparatus. This left me with around 90 milliliters of glacial acetic acid, and I'm not sure what the yield would be on that as I didn't measure any of my starting reagents, but I can pretty much guarantee it's not very good. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but pure acetic acid is referred to as glacial because it has a fairly high melting point and will actually crystallize just below room temperature, or around 16 degrees Celsius. To demonstrate this, I went ahead and put the flask in the freezer for about an hour, and when I took it out you can see that the whole thing had frozen solid, which I always think is cool unless I need to use acetic acid in the winter only to find the bottle is frozen, then it's really annoying. Now that's pretty much it. There's not really any other ways to make acetic acid that would be reasonably feasible for a normal person to do at home. However, before I go, I did want to tell you guys about the very first inorganic synthesis of acetic acid, which was completed in 1945 by the German chemist Hermann Kolbe. Kolbe? Kolbe? Not sure. Anyway, his process started with the chlorination of carbon disulfide to carbon tetrachloride which was followed by pyrolysis to tetrachloroethylene. After he had the tetrachloroethylene, the final steps were an aqueous chlorination to trichloroacetic acid, which was followed by electrolytic reduction to acetic acid. I do think there is a certain beauty in the mechanical logic of this process, and it does prove that there are methods out there that are even more inefficient than what I showed here today. In any case, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very, very appreciated. And to everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.